You're watching the International Daily Roundup with People's Dispatch, where we bring you some of the top stories from across the globe. Let's take a look at today's headlines. Haiti's Transitional Council announces interim president. At least 79 anti coup protesters killed in Sudan so far. Palestinians protest attacks in Jerusalem and Negev. Argentina and the IMF reach agreement over loan. In our first story, we look at the latest political developments in Haiti. The National Transitional Council has elected economist Fritz Alfonso Jean as the interim president. Former Senator Stephen Benoit has been chosen as the interim prime minister. These appointments are a result of a political process which began with the Montan Montana Accord. A coalition of over 1,000 civil society groups, political parties and individuals signed the agreement on August 30th, 2021. It called for the setting up of a transitional council and an acting president and prime minister. 42 out of the council's original 44 members elected Jean and Benoit on January 30th. The organization has called for the setting up of the new government on February 7th. The interim administration will have a mandate of two years. February 7th marks the day on which the term of current de facto president Ariel Henry is set to expire. Despite mass protests by Haitians, the date was recognized as the official end of term for Havinal Moise by the US and the UN. Weeks after Moise was assassinated, Ariel Henry took over as head of state in a decision backed by the US. As per reports, Henry was unaware of Sunday's vote and has opposed the Montana Accord. He has previously stated that he will remain in office until new elections are held. Henry's mandate has been rejected as illegitimate and unconstitutional by large sections of Haiti's civil society. An ongoing violent crackdown has pushed the death toll in Sudan's anti-coup protest to 79. The Central Committee of Sudanese Doctors reported that 27-year-old Mohammed Yusuf Ismail was killed in Khartoum on January 30th. Hundreds of thousands of people took to the streets on Sunday for the 16th March of Millions. As protesters marched in the capital, they were attacked with tear gas, rubber bullets and live ammunition. Violence by junta forces was also reported in places including Kasala and Blue Nile. The junta has imposed a ban on protests and over 21,000 have reportedly been detained. Despite this, the Sudanese Professionals Association and the resistance committees have continued to lead mobilizations. In a major move, protesters in the Red Sea state blocked a critical highway in Port Sudan. The road is used for trade with Egypt, which is known to be supporting the junta. Resistance committees in Adbara city also blocked a bridge connecting Port Sudan to Khartoum. The Sharyan El Shima road to the Egyptian border in the northern state has been blocked by farmers since January 9th. While the action was originally taken to protest a hike in electricity prices, the blockade has continued. Farmers and residents are demanding a fair share in the revenue from mining and agricultural projects. These revenues are usually cornered by the state and companies owned by the military. Hundreds of Palestinians held a protest outside the Israeli municipality of Jerusalem on January 30th. The action was organized against the ongoing demolitions and displacements within the city and in al nakab Protesters raised slogans saying no to ethnic cleansing and our homes are our lives. The protest was organized by residents of the Jabal al mukabar neighborhood in occupied East Jerusalem. Israeli authorities had issued demolition notices to some families in the area on January 27th. A medical center in the neighborhood was partially destroyed earlier this month despite a pending court appeal. Residents were able to obtain a stay order which halted the demolition halfway. Israel justifies the destruction of Palestinian homes on the basis that they lack permits. However, rights groups point out that over 75% of applications for building or repair are either rejected or delayed. According to Peace Now, out of the over 4,400 requests filed by Palestinians between 2009 and 2018, only 98 were approved. Beth Salem has recorded the demolition of over 4,300 Palestinian homes since 2006. Over the past few weeks, Israel has also escalated violence against Palestinian Bedouins in the Nakab or Negev desert. The village of Al Araqib was demolished for the 197th time since the year 2000 last week. Palestinians are resisting further land theft in the region under the guise of a forestation drive by the quasi-governmental Jewish National Fund. And for a final story, Argentina has reached an agreement with the International Monetary Fund. Both sides had been holding talks for nearly two years over a $57 billion loan. The deal 
was reached in 2018 under former right-wing president Mauricio Macri and was the largest in the fund's history. According to its terms, Argentina would have to pay back $19 million in 2022 and 2023 each. Once President Alberto Fernandez took office in 2020, he refused the rest of the loan and asked to renegotiate the terms. The deal had seen drastic austerity measures implemented under Macri. However, the Fernandez government maintained that it would not agree to terms that would jeopardize Argentina's future. The loan sparked repeated protests with people urging the government to not recognize the agreement. Finally, it was announced on January 29 that an agreement in principle had been reached. The government has stated that it will not rapidly devalue its currency. President Fernandez has also announced that there will be no cuts to social spending and public works. The deal also includes new financing and spending increases on infrastructure, science and technology. Argentina has agreed to reduce its fiscal deficit and cut central bank financing out of the treasury. Subsidies for energy will also be reduced. Argentina also made a payment of $713 million, which was due on Friday. The agreement must now be approved by the parliament. And that's all for today's episode. For more such stories, visit our website, peoplesdispatch.org, and follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Thank you for watching.